This is CBN News Watch. It is Friday, March 5th, 2021. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Ephraim Graham. Ahead today, COVID relief on Capitol Hill. The Senate working late into the night and this morning to read the massive COVID relief bill. Why politicians are split. The Pope making his first ever papal visit to Iraq. The message is sent. The message is sending to the country's dwindling number of Christians. We've got to look at that. Israel planning to lift their restrictions. What it means for those with the vaccine and those without it. And finally, getting ready to hit the court. March Madness is back this month with some changes, as you can expect. All those stories and more ahead in today's edition of CBN Newswatch. The Senate continues to work today reading the massive COVID relief bill. It split down party lines. Democrats want to push forward with the bill that includes several of their initiatives, including unemployment benefits of $400 a week and stimulus payouts of $1,400 for Americans earning up to $75,000 a year. Republicans are stalling, calling the relief package a spending spree. Nearly $2 trillion would be spent if the bill passes. The real tragedy here is not Senate process. It's how ill-suited this bill is to what Americans need right now. A recent Monmouth University poll says 62 percent of Americans are in favor of the $1.9 trillion relief package compared to 34 percent of Americans who oppose it. The stimulus bill also includes $160 billion for COVID testing and vaccinations. Right now, an average of 2 million vaccines are being distributed every day in the United States. In California, Governor Gavin Newsom has ordered 40 percent of all vaccines be reserved for the most vulnerable, low-income communities. He also called out leaders who are forging, foregoing mask mandates and other restrictions. We are encouraging people basically to double down on mask wearing, particularly in light of all of what I would argue is bad information coming from at least four states in this country. Dr. Anthony Fauci says studies are being conducted on a, vac on a vaccinated to find people to find out which activities are safe and which restrictions can be lifted in the near future. More Americans may be finding work. The Labor Department's monthly report on jobs is due to come out this morning. Economists expect it will show 182,000 jobs were created last month. In January, about 49,000 jobs were created. Pope Francis has left Italy for Iraq. He is going to urge the country's dwindling number of Christians to stay put and help to rebuild the country after years of war and persecution. Francis is breaking his year-long COVID-19 lockdown to refocus the world's attention on a largely neglected people whose northern Christian communities were largely emptied during the violent Islamic State reign from 2014 to 2017. During his visit, Francis will also pray in the Baghdad church that was the site of one of the worst massacres of Christians, the 2010 attack by Islamic militants that left 58 people dead. This weekend, Israel will ease up on some of its coronavirus restrictions. Tuesday, the country's coronavirus cabinet approved a plan to increase the number of a number arriving Israel tra Israeli travelers from 200 to 3,000 from 200 to 3,000 each day. Joining us now to talk more about the latest development is Middle East bureau chief Chris Mitchell. So, Chris, this new policy will come into effect on Sunday. What precautions are Israeli leaders also taking? Well, Ephraim, uh, one thing they're doing actually is limiting the number of flights leaving Israel, and you have to be vaccinated to get out of there. Those returning abroad, they have, those 200 are now 3,000. They have to quarantine for 10 days. They either do that in a quarantine hotel. There's actually one right across the street from here in the bureau, or they have to wear a monitoring bracelet. bracelet if they go to their home, that means uh, the police can track them if they if they do so leave. It's going to be enforced by the Israeli police. In fact, they have more than 660 new, not police, but then monitors to make sure that nobody's violating their quarantines. Uh, also, uh, foreign nationals coming in here, they have to apply to a committee to get entry. Uh, many people ask about tourism, uh, and not yet. Uh, it seems like Israel's not ready yet to have tourism come here to Israel. What does this mean for Israelis who have the vaccine and those without it? 
Well, right now, Ephraim, you have sort of a two-tiered system within Israel. Those who have had the vaccination, two shots, and then plus a week uh, as they monitor to see what's happened. And then if you do that, you get a green pass, and you can go to gyms and other places. But there's some Israelis that object to this, those that aren't vaccinated. Uh, first of all, some people don't believe the vaccine is safe, so they don't want to take it. And uh, and actually, they're citing what's called the Norbing, uh, Norbing Code, is, uh, is you don't get medical treatment without their consent. Uh, and right now they feel that Israel is being too coercive in, uh, in, vac in making sure the people that aren't vaccinated go ahead and get the vaccine or they are sort of, in a sense, discriminated against in their opinion because they can't do certain things here within the, within the country. Can you tell us the latest warning by Israel about Iran's nuclear program? Well, that's the other issue, the main issue here in uh, in Israel, Ephraim. It's uh, COVID, certainly, but also uh, what's happening with Iran. Benny Gantz just came out. He again warned militarily that Israel will do what it can to defend itself. Uh, that follows the IDF chief of staff, uh, Aviv uh, Kohavi, just a few weeks ago. He also warned that they're getting um, operational plans to strike Iran's uh, mil uh, nuclear program. Uh, he also warned about Hezbollah. And so what Israel is really concerned concerned about is re-entering the Iranian nuclear deal. In their view, that's going to pave the way for Iran to get a nuclear bomb. So they're sending the message to Israel, Iran, and the rest of the world. They'll do what it takes to stop Iran's nuclear program. Before we let you go, what can we look forward to for Jerusalem Dateline this week? Well, we have the ICC ruling about uh, investigating uh, Israel for a uh, uh, <clears throat> possible war crimes. But also, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the Pope's visit. And, you know, uh, seeing the Pope visit there, I was, uh, we were there uh, several years ago in a place called Karakosh. The Pope's going to visit there. So a lot of people are hopeful uh, about what, uh, what's happened in the last several years. We'll also have uh, something called the City of Lights. There was a light show here recently in Jerusalem, all part of this week's Jerusalem Dateline. All right. Look forward to that. Thank you so much, Chris. I want to remind you at home that you can see more news from the Middle East from Chris and his team on the CBN News Channel tonight at 830 Eastern Standard Time. Tens of thousands of peaceful protesters continue to flood the streets of Myanmar despite the growing bloodshed and violence. More than 50 people have died since the military seized power last month. George Thomas has the latest. As Myanmar's security forces intensify their crackdown and civilian casualties grow, the country's newly appointed special envoy to the United Nations has branded the military government as terrorists. In his first interview with an American TV news organization, Dr. Sasa tells CBN News that Myanmar's military has turned against its own people. It's very sad. They have declared the war on the people of Myanmar in a very aggressive way. Sasa, medical doctor, humanitarian, and well-known evangelical Christian leader, appealed to his huge Facebook following to send him evidence of the military's human rights violations and abuses. His inbox is reportedly filled with thousands of messages. It is really um, uh, for us to uh, submit all those evidence and proof to United Nations Human Rights Council and also UN Security Council to build up the maximum pressures to these uh, brutal uh, military regimes. <laughs> Scores of dramatic videos like this one, taken by an eyewitness in southern Myanmar, shows the military's use of deadly force. And we're also seeing, uh, correspondingly, a large number of arrests. Um, so as of today, we've documented um, at least 1,000 um, arrests of people who have been arbitrarily detained. And we're talking here about doctors, medical workers, teachers, um, activists, opposition politicians. But the arrests and violence are doing little to deter tens of thousands of protesters, among them Myanmar's Christians, urging the military generals to step down. I would really appreciate if the, uh, our brothers and sisters around the world uh, pray for my country in this time of troubles. Dr. Sasa spoke from an undisclosed location. His appointment as Myanmar's UN Special Envoy is not recognized by the military junta. Are you afraid uh, for your life? Uh, are you concerned that you might be arrested? Uh, definitely they will do anything to harm us. 
um, they have issued several notification uh, threatening us, but I am appointed by the people of Myanmar. Uh, therefore, I will represent the people of Myanmar till the end. George Thomas, CBN News. Coming up, what a new report says about the shocking number of times you're caught on camera without having a clue. We've got the story for you next. Want to be a part of a community that inspires your spiritual growth while winning prizes? The all-new MyCBN app. Connect with the community for prayer and encouragement. Track and set spiritual goals. Enjoy conversation starters with friends and family. And collect points to win prizes. The all-new MyCBN app. A great place to belong. Download the app at cbn.com slash mobile. Grow. Connect. Have fun. The all-new MyCBN app. On the home front. Thanks for joining us for CBN's On the Home Front, where we highlight what the men and women of America's military do to defend our country. CBN honors the men and women in our military with an initiative called Helping the Home Front. It partners with churches across the country to meet the needs of their military families, from repairing homes to wiping out medical bills for wounded veterans. Watch On the Home Front today at 2.30. Often we carry baggage from our past. You know what it's like. It affects everything and everyone in our lives. It's always there, weighing us down and keeping us from achieving true happiness. But do you know God never meant for us to be trapped in the past? You can be free of your baggage. Learn how God's forgiveness leads to changed lives and new beginnings. Call the 700 Club. I spent many years here. Now available. Though I'm not from this land. From CBN Films. And I've returned with a message. I am Patrick. Get your DVD with 4K streaming access for a gift of any dollar amount. I received a divine revelation. A splendid account of St. Patrick. He didn't know what he faced, possible death. I am Patrick tells his story with truth, candor, and beauty. Christ the Lord told me to come here to preach the gospel. Featuring John Rhys Davies. Get your DVD of I Am Patrick for a gift of any dollar amount. Also included is your special access to the St. Patrick's Day premiere of the I Am Patrick theatrical release with exclusive bonus content on the CBN family app. Call 1-800-700-7000 or visit IamPatrick.com today. Big Brother is watching you, literally. You are being caught on camera hundreds of times a week without even knowing it. Nearly 200 million security cameras are now trained on American citizens. So is there any way to protect yourself from this invasion of privacy? CBN's national security correspondent Eric Phillips has more. A recent report estimates about a billion security cameras rolling worldwide, 18% of them here in the United States, like at this ATM. Every time you do your banking, you're caught on camera. But you don't have to be using a service like that in order to be caught on camera. In fact, just walking down the street, you can be captured on closed circuit TV. The U.S. is second only to China when it comes to keeping eyes on its citizens. Make no mistake, Big Brother is watching. According to safety.com, the average American is caught on camera 238 times each week. Wow. <laughs> it surprises me and it feels a bit weird to, to think about that. Concerning at all? No, 
I just think it keeps people safer than it doesn't. And if you don't want to be doing something that shouldn't be recorded, don't do it. Here's how those 238 camera views rack up. Cameras capture you at home or in your neighborhood 14 times a week, 160 times behind the wheel. While you're working, candid cameras catch you 40 times, maybe more if you're in retail, travel, or high security industries, and 24 times a week while shopping or running errands. I mean, I don't like it, uh, but I don't know if it surprises me, but, uh, but yeah, not a great thing to know. Jay Stanley is a senior policy analyst with the ACLU. We're seeing a very rapid increase in the amount of public cameras that Americans are subject to. Right now we have about 15 cameras for every 100 people in America, about 50 million cameras. Um, and that's more per capita than any other country in the world, even China. I mean, the basic concern is that we're gonna lose our privacy and we're gonna become a country that's different from what we've always been. That from the moment you step out of your front door until you return home at night, every moment of your life in public will be recorded, um, potentially scrutinized, watched. He says it's often artificial intelligence keeping track, not humans. Computers that analyze your daily routines, and that understand what you're doing, what you're carrying, what you're wearing, who you are, what your attributes are, and filing that away somewhere. You don't expect privacy on the street corner. So if a camera captures what you're doing in the street corner, I don't think that's an intrusion on privacy. UCLA law professor Eugene Volokh believes the positives outweigh the negatives. Makes it easier, for example, to catch criminals. Maybe makes it easier to exonerate people who are falsely accused of crime. May also deter crime. While cameras have their problems, the question is compared to what? Compared to more aggressive police presence, the problems may be less. Both experts agree the biggest concern is the potential for government tracking its citizens under the guise of crime prevention. We're seeing some cities like Chicago putting police cameras all over the city and networking them together. They're also tying in private cameras. Um, in some cases, the ring cameras are being networked together by Amazon, which takes all the camera feeds and puts them in the cloud, um, potentially making them available to the authorities. Part of the solution, experts say, is private citizens asking themselves several questions before installing cameras on personal property. Do you trust the manufacturer who may store images on their own servers? Do you trust the internet? Because any cameras tied to the web are susceptible to being hacked. And do you trust the government that in many cases can use a warrant to access what your camera captures. But if you're really worried about that, I think the solution is to make it harder to abuse the cameras and not to, not to stop them altogether. Nobody's saying that you can stop technology from rolling forward, but you can put some constraints on it, shape how it's um, deployed so that it comports with our values. Stanley says that's where lawmakers should step in. He says they need to implement laws controlling access to these cameras, allowing us to benefit from this tech without becoming a surveillance society. In Washington, Eric Phillips, CBN News. Still ahead, what eager fans and players can expect this year for March Madness. We've got the story for you. Sean Brown joins us next. Life is better with a good night's sleep. Get your free DVD or booklet of Protect Your Sleep today. I'm Ephraim Graham, and this is Studio 5. Cruise with me as I discover the good things happening in the world of music, sports, television, and movies. The fact that Ryan Coogler was going to be directing the film, I knew that something special was going to happen. We'll chat with artists at the forefront of entertainment and explore the connection between popular culture and faith. I asked my pastor, I said, well, does that mean I'm supposed to be a preacher? He says, well, no, you already have a pulpit. Watch Studio 5, Wednesday night at 9.30. Remember for a moment what it was like to be a child. You believed every story you were told. You saw a world full of endless possibilities. What stories will the world's orphaned and at-risk children believe? 
We believe the Bible tells the only story truly worth believing. We believe that every child should have the opportunity to dream, the chance to take challenges and turn them into possibilities, the chance to stand on the promises of God, to recognize their place in the greatest story ever told. They have their whole lives ahead of them. Theirs is a world of endless possibilities. They are looking for a story to believe. We will tell them that story. Will you join us? <laughs> this week, we turn the page on February and enter March, which means March Madness is on the horizon. CBN Sports Director Sean Brown is joining us right now to talk about this highly anticipated sports event. You know, last year, the NCAA canceled Division I basketball tournaments for men and for women. What's your sense on how the players are feeling this year? Hey, good morning, Ephraim. Hey, March Madness is back. They're excited about it after, of course, being disappointed last year after working so hard only to find out they can't have a tournament. Uh, those players are back. They're fired up. Um, just a lot of energy, I'm sure. It's going to be very, very exciting. A lot of changes from last year in the teams. And so i um, really excited, I imagine. And so um, it just, just brace yourself. It's going to be an exciting tournament. Speaking of changes, I know there must be some special precautions that have been taken uh, for these games. Yes. Well, all of the games will be held in Indianapolis um, in different stadiums throughout the uh, Indianapolis area, including Lucas Oil Stadium, where the Colts play, as well as Baker's Life Fieldhouse, where the Pacers and the Fever play. Um, all of them will stay in Marriott properties and will be designated to certain floors. And so I'm sure it's going to be coordinated how they go to go out for team dinners and things like that. Um, uh, as far as, as, far as uh, testing goes, the local uh, health uh, healthcare workers, uh, the NCAA is working with the local healthcare workers to make sure teams can be tested um, going in. But they're still working out the details in that as we move in, into the weeks ahead. So, do you expect the structure of the game to look similar to years past? Well, you know what? That's that's actually interesting. No, uh, it's actually going to be very, very normal. Um, once the teams are selected on March 14th. The first four will begin on uh, March 18th, followed by the actual team, uh, the actual tournament of teams of 64 uh, on March uh, 19th. And then we go from 64 to 32, 32 to 16, 16 to 8. And then the final four happens April 3rd, uh, Saturday, April 3rd, followed by the tournament, the, the championship game on, um, on March, uh, excuse me, April 5th. And so it's going to look very similar. What's going to be, of course, the madness is going to happen, and that's where the surprise is. That's, that's mm -hmm. what we're looking for because the teams that are usually in the top 10 aren't there right now. And so that, as we move forward into team selections and whatnot, I'm anxious to see where everybody's going to be seated. So it's going to be really exciting. Indeed. Real quick before we let you go, going the distance this weekend, what can we look forward to? Hey, I did an interview with St. Louis Cardinals um, pitcher uh, Daniel Ponce de Leon, a guy who – right before he was trying to make it to the big leagues, was struck by a, a fastball to the, to the head. Um, and they thought he was going to die. And so he wrote a book called One Line Drive, mm -hmm. uh, where he talks about how he made it back within that year and what God did uh, to, to, to get him to from the minors into the majors. So it's just really, really great interview. So stay awesome. tuned for that. Looking forward to that indeed. Want to remind you at home that you can catch Sean Brown on Going the Distance this weekend on the CBN News Channel, Saturday at 6.30 and Sunday at 7.30, both of those Eastern Standard Time. Coming up, serving as a model to spread the gospel to young people. Find out the role CBN is playing overseas when we come back. Yeah, buddy. How many nickels are in a dollar? There are 20 nickels Wait. in a dollar. How do birds fly? Does milk really make my bones stronger? Yeah, yeah. Daddy, when we die, will we go to heaven? Do you have the answer to life's biggest question? Call the 700 Club. We'll help you find answers to the important questions life brings your way. Watch breaking news, in-depth exclusive stories and programs from health to entertainment you won't find anywhere else. The CBN News Channel, a perspective you can trust. Enjoy credible news reporting from around the world. Discover inspiring programs and stories of hope all in one place from a Christian perspective. The CBN News Channel, a perspective you can trust. To watch the CBN News Channel, download the app or visit CBNNewsChannel.com. 
Hello, I'm Dr. David Perlmutter, board-certified neurologist and number one New York Times best-selling author. Wouldn't it be great to boost your energy, eliminate brain fog, and even reverse brain disease? Well, you can, and I'm going to show you how, along with some of the world's most well-respected brain experts in this DVD, Protect Your Brain. Get Protect Your Brain, a free DVD, only from the Christian Broadcasting Network. Featuring experts on the cutting edge of neuroscience and brain health. No matter how many times you've failed in the past, you really can do this. In Protect Your Brain, you'll discover simple strategies to keep your brain young and healthy. Improve your memory. Discover the gut-brain connection. In Protect Your Brain, get your free copy at CBN.com or call 1-800-700-7000. If you want to improve the quality of your life, get the DVD, Protect Your Brain, and get it today. One more thing before you start having fun. This Easter from Superbook. Remember, this is a mission trip. It's a challenge to talk about Jesus to people you don't know. Chris and Joy discover there are those who need to see to believe. I want to tell you about Jesus. <laughs> Forget it. I'm not going to waste my time on people who don't want to listen. Superbook! Join the Superbook Club and get Superbook's newest episode, Doubting Thomas, plus two copies to share with others, all for your gift of only $25. And as a bonus, receive the Superbook Easter double feature, which includes The Last Supper and He is Risen. The woman, Mary, who says she saw Jesus alive. How do I know it's true? Why doesn't Jesus just show himself to everybody? <gasps> Jesus gave them what they needed so they could believe. My Lord. Join the Superbook Club today and receive the Easter double feature as our way of saying thanks. Superbook Club members, free streaming for seasons one through five is now available. And welcome back. We've got some more Superbook news for you. Due to the coronavirus, CBN has relaunched its weekly online Superbook Sunday School curriculum, and it's happening in Thailand on Facebook and on YouTube. Here's how it works for each episode. A teacher interacts with students on Zoom, virtually sharing a lesson. Now, that lesson consists of a worship song, crafts, and Superbook Academy videos. The experience not only encourages families and children watching the program, it also serves as a model for Sunday school teachers to start their own online classes. Time now for your Friday Faithful. And today, I want to leave you with this message as we wrap yet another work week. Focus on you until the focus is on you. I know I've said it before, but it is worthy of repeating. Here's the long and short of it. Do the work in private, and God will shine the light in public. And he is going to do that in his perfect time. With that word, I encourage you to make today a fabulous Friday, and be sure to have yourself a wonderful weekend. And do that on purpose, with purpose, and in purpose. That is going to do it for this edition of CBN News Watch. Thank you so much for watching. Remember, you can always find more of our programs on the CBN News Channel at any time. You can also find them online at CBNNews.com. We'd love to hear from you. Let us know what you think about the stories you've seen here today. You can email us. The address is right there at the bottom of your screen. It's newswatch at CBN.com. And, of course, you can always reach out and touch us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We'd love to hear from you. Again, we'll see you right back here come Monday. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye-bye, everybody.